Hi, it's Rob. Welcome to this video where we'll store sensor data sent from a Raspberry Pi to AWS IoT in a DynamoDB database using AWS Lambda. This video is a continuation of my prior video where I sent distance data from an ultrasonic sensor attached to a Raspberry Pi to AWS IoT. If you haven't seen that video and would like to follow along with this tutorial, I suggest pausing the video here and watching the prior video first. I'll add a link to it in the description below if you're interested. As in the last video, we'll start here with the Raspberry Pi. And the only modification I've made to the Pi project is to change the script. I've added a link to the GitHub repo with the code in the description below for you to grab and follow along. For starters, on line two, I added an import for the datetime library. Now, if I scroll down to the publish data function, you'll see that on line 67, I'm declaring a variable named timestamp and setting it equal to a formatted string of the current time. Also, on lines 59 through 65, I declared a variable named status and I'm setting its value to green, yellow, or red dependent upon the distance. Finally, in the JSON that I'm publishing to the MQTT topic, I've changed it from just sending the distance to sending the timestamp and the status as well. Now, with the code updated in place, it's time to push it up to the Pi. However, before I do that, I want to show you a new script that I wrote. It's called Distance Simulator. And if after the last video, you took your ultrasonic sensor device apart and you don't feel like rebuilding it, or you're just watching along with this video and haven't built the circuit yet, but want to follow along, you can run this distance simulator script on your Pi instead of building the ultrasonic sensor circuit. So what this does is it has a collection of hard-coded distances. Then in the publish data function, it loops through the distances each time through getting the current distance, printing it, then setting the status, getting the timestamp, and then publishing the JSON payload to the MQTT topic. Then I do the same in a reverse order for the distances before exiting the program. This script will be in the GitHub repository along with the script.py file. Now we'll push all the code up to the Pi. So I'll jump to a terminal and ping the Pi to make sure it's on the network. Then SSH into it. Then I'll make a directory for our new project. And change into it. Then I'll open up another terminal. And copy all the files from our local project folder into the new PyOTDB project folder on the Raspberry Pi. And now we see our new files are uploaded. All right, so now we can go ahead and run the script. And since we're already subscribed to the MTT topic, as the script runs, we should see our data published to the topic. So the distance simulator script is running. It spun up the thread, connected to AWS IoT, and we see our data being published to the topic. All right, this is looking pretty good. So I think we can stop here and move on to persisting the data into DynamoDB. Okay, so here I am on the DynamoDB console. And if I come over and click tables, we see I currently have no tables. Now, I could go ahead and create a table here. However, since I'm working in AWS IoT, I'm going to head over to the IoT console, scroll down to message routing, and select rules. Here, I'll create a rule and give it a name. I'll call it Raspberry Pi rule, and then click next. Here, I want to enter a SQL statement 
which will select from the data that I'm publishing to the topic that I can use to send to DynamoDB. And for me, that select statement will be simply select star, so select all the data that's being published from the Raspberry Pi slash data topic. Now I'll click next. And here I have to select a rule action, which will be DynamoDB. Now I'm prompted to select a table name, but since I don't have a DynamoDB table yet, I'll go ahead and click here to create one. And I'll give it a table name of Raspy Data V1. The partition key will be the timestamp that we're publishing to the MQTT topic in the JSON data. Its data type will be a string. I'll scroll down and take the default settings. Okay, now that the table's active, I'll go back over to the IoT console, refresh, and select the table. The partition key will be the timestamp. Again, it's a string. And for the partition value, we want to use a dollar sign to go to the results of executing the SQL statement and grab the value for the timestamp. Now I'll scroll down. And before I click next, I need to create an IM role. So here I'll click create new role. I'll give it a name of Raspberry Pi role, create. And the role name is populated in the IAM role field. Click next, review, and create. Okay, so now we have our Raspberry Pi rule and it's active. So let's go back to the MQTT test client. We'll clear out the published data, then jump back into the terminal and run the distance simulator again. So here we see our data being published to the topic. And now if we go over to DynamoDB, click into the database, explore table items, and we see our data being published to the database. Now, Although we see the timestamp data broken out as the primary key, the rest of the published data is in a single payload field in the database. And we would really like this data broken out into individual fields. So let's go back to the IoT console and we'll go down to rules. Here, I'm gonna disable the Raspberry Pi rule and create a new rule. I'll call it Raspberry Pi Rule 2. Click Next. Again, I want to select star from our topic. Click Next. For the rule action, I'll click DynamoDB again. And instead of selecting our existing table, I'm going to create a new DynamoDB table. I'll give it a name of Raspy Data V2. The primary key will still be timestamp, which as we know is a string. But this time we're going to add a sort key of distance, which is a number, as we see here. So I'll scroll down, create the table. Now it's active, so I'll go back to the IoT console, refresh, select a new table, add the timestamp as the partition key in the partition key value. And for the sort key, I'll add distance, which as we said is a number, and set the sort key value to dollar distance. Here, I'll just go ahead and create a new rule. Create. Click Next. Review and create. Okay, so our first rule is inactive and our new rule is active. So let's go back to the MTT test client, 
I'll go ahead and clear out the data, jump back into the terminal, and run the distance simulator again. Okay, we see our data coming through in the topic. Now let's go to our new DynamoDB table, click into it, explore table items, and now we see our timestamp and our distance. However, in the payload object, we still have our status. And of course, we want that broken out into its own column as well. But in order to do that, we need to use AWS Lambda. Okay, so here I am in the AWS Lambda console. And I could just go ahead and create the function here. But like before, when we created the DynamoDB table, since we're interacting with AWS IoT, I'm going to jump back over to the IoT console, click on Rules. Here I'm going to disable the Raspberry Pi Rule 2 and create a new rule. This will be Raspberry Pi Rule 3. Click Next. Enter the SQL statement. Click Next. And for rule action, this time I'll click Lambda. Now, because I haven't yet created a Lambda function to use with this rule, I'll click the Create Lambda Function button. I'll leave the default author from scratch and give the function a name. For the runtime, I'll select Python 3.8. And for permissions, I'll let it create a new role with basic Lambda permissions, then create the function. Okay, now with the Lambda function created, I'll go back to the IoT console, refresh, and select the function. Scroll down, click Next, Review, and Create. Okay, now we see our first two rules are inactive and our new Raspberry Pi rule three is active. And if we go back to the Lambda console and refresh the page, now we see a new trigger is added from AWS IoT. Now I've gone ahead and pasted in the code for our function, which will be available in the GitHub repo. So let's go through it. I start out by importing the Boto3 library, and then in the Lambda handler function, which takes an event and a context, I create a variable named client, which is equal to an instance of a Boto3 client for DynamoDB. Then I have a response variable, which is equal to calling the put item method on the client, passing it a table name and an item. Looking at the item, it's in a JSON format and it has the properties that we're passing in the JSON object when we publish to the topic. So timestamp, distance, and status. Timestamp is a string and its value is coming from the timestamp passed into the event. Distance is a number, which is the distance passed into the event, but we need to convert it to a string for the JSON syntax. And then status is a string, which is the status passed into the event. Now, before we go ahead and test this out, if we look at the table name property, we see that I've entered a table name of Raspy Data V3. So currently we have two versions of our DynamoDB table, but for this demo, we're going to create a new one. So I'll jump back into the DynamoDB console and create a new table. I'll give this one a name of Raspy Data V3. And the partition key will still be a timestamp, which is a string. This time I won't use a sort key. Now I'll scroll down and create the table. Now let's head back over to Lambda and now we can go ahead and test. So I'll give the event a name and then enter the key value pairs in the JSON. Remember, distance is a number. 
scroll down, save it, and run the test. Oh, and it looks like I got hello from Lambda. So I need to deploy the changes. So let me jump back here, go ahead and deploy. Now I'll go ahead and test. Uh, and it looks like I have a syntax error. So let's jump back in the code and take a look at that. Uh, and it looks like I have a double quote here instead of a colon. So let's go ahead and save this and redeploy and test it again. Okay, and here we have another error, but this time it's not a syntax error. It's saying that the user doesn't have permissions to assume the role to perform the DynamoDB put item. So let's head over to IAM, create a new role with the appropriate permissions and attach it to this Lambda function. Okay, so in the IAM console, I'll go ahead and click roles, then create role. This will be a role for an AWS service. The service will be Lambda. And it will be for DynamoDB. Now I'll go ahead and click next. I'll filter on DynamoDB. And for the demo, I'll just pick DynamoDB Full Access. Click Next. Give it a name. And create the role. Now let's head back over to Lambda. Go into Configuration. Under Permissions, I'll edit the execution role. and select the role we just created. Go ahead and save. We see that was updated. We'll go back to the code and test again. This time we see the test event name was my test event. The response is zero. And if we go over to DynamoDB now into our Raspi data V3 and explore the table items, we see our item was inserted into the database. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and delete this row or delete the item. And I think we have all our infrastructure in place to jump back into the terminal and run the application. So first, let me go back to the IoT console, go into the test client, clear it out. Now we'll go to the terminal, run the application, And we see the data being published to the topic. So let's jump over to DynamoDB and run a scan. And here we see our data, which is being published from the Raspberry Pi. So that concludes this video on sending sensor data to a Raspberry Pi to AWS IoT and persisting in a DynamoDB database using AWS Lambda. If you found it useful, feel free to give it a like. And if you'd like to be notified when I add more content, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in another video soon.